begins the first day of early voting. You can vote from 8.30 to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday at the York Government Center, 6 South Congress Street in York. Unfortunately, that's the only uh, early voting site, and you can vote through Friday the 13th. It's on the lower level of the government center. If you are not registered to vote, you have 30 days before the election to register. In South Carolina, there is no residency requirement. Um, Just quickly, I wanted to uh, remind everyone, a couple Sundays ago, I made an announcement about National Faith and Blue Weekend. So we are down to one week. Uh, National Faith and Blue Weekend is uh, October 7th, or actually it's October 6th through the 9th. But we will have uh, activities in Rock Hill this upcoming weekend. On the 7th, well first, let me go back and say what National Faith and Blue is. National Faith and Blue is a partnership between law enforcement professionals and faith-based organizations to bring together leaders and members from all communities, regardless of your race, your neighborhood association, your church affiliation, or your profession, to engage in, engage with each other, it's to uh, tear down walls of communication, to uh, build partnerships and relationships and collaboration. So that is our goal for next weekend. Uh, on Friday, we're doing a community bike ride from the Velodrome in Rock Hill and Riverwalk downtown, so the police officers and community members riding together. On Saturday, there's an event at the BMX Supercross Track, 1307 Riverwalk Parkway. It is a community event for all. Um, there will be information tents and uh, music by the Rock Hill MLK Choir, Winter University, and Flint <coughs> College. And then on Sunday, next Sunday, at 5.30, Pastor John P. Key and New Life Fellowship Choir will be here at Rock Hill to do a free concert at the West End Baptist Church on McConnell's Highway, 1727 McConnell's Highway. So uh, 5.30 next Sunday. It is a free concert. If you do plan to attend, I would suggest showing up early. I think the church seats uh, 1,300 people. So if you're 1,301, you may not get it. Um, I want to thank everyone who, uh, for your encouragement in putting this together. It has been a journey. Still some hurdles to overcome. Um, People said it could be done. You know, called it national faith. It's called National Faith and Blue Weekend. I told them to catch the vision. Mm. Um, didn't start out with no money to uh, do this, and uh, two months we raised over sixteen thousand dollars in sponsorship. Mm. So this happened. So um, again, there's still some naysayers out there, but it's happening. Um, confirmed with Pastor Key last week, and. Friday night, about 9 o'clock, I got a text message. There is another national recording artist that will join me to open up for you. Uh, I'll provide a confirmation tomorrow. That information will be out this week. For more information, you can go to www.faithandblue.org to learn more about the initiative. Or you can contact me or go to our Rock Hill Police Department website. Thank you.
in for 2020 to 2023. Strength like 
said that he and his wife purposed within themselves that this fellowship would not go without the word of God. That's right. Amen. No what was going on. Thank you, God. Every Sunday, the table had been set. Yeah. Yeah. They feasted. No matter what the weather was, his brother and his wife, they came out. And they Amen. Came out. They prepared the table for us. Yes. And we yes. were, we've been blessed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So, you know, since we live in a technological age, uh, there's some things that need to be updated. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we've understood that my brother has an ancient that's the word that was given to us. Ancient <laughs> laptop. <laughs> so, what we ought to do as a fellowship is to give this brother an update <laughs> so that no matter what he's doing, whether he's preparing the word for us okay. or doing something on his leisure time, that he won't have any glitches. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just want to make life a little bit easier. So, Amen. 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 Amen.
both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I would execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be assigned for you on the houses, you to uh, on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not come on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. 35, 36. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. And they had asked for the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. I want to just talk with you on this first Sunday back in this place, passed over, but not passed over. Passed over, but not passed over. The subject of our message today appears to be an oxymoron. An oxymoron is a statement of words that seems to be contradictory. The question that arises from this subject is how can something or someone be passed over but not passed over? To understand this message, you must follow it from its beginning to its conclusion. And if you do, you will understand that there is no contradiction, rather, you'll understand that there is clarity. At the center of today's message is God's dealing with the children of Israel. Last week we saw how God brought the children of Israel to Jordan as they prepared to go into the land of promise. If you know this story, you know that before they went into the land of promise, they were in bondage in the land of Egypt. Somebody today needs to realize that where we are does not dictate where God can take us. Amen. You see, sometimes we may have to deal with circumstances. We may deal with uncertainties, frustrations, and challenges before we get to where God is ultimately taking us. Instead of us being a pessimist about our possibilities, we must hold to God's unchanging hand. Will you just look at yourself today with all that you are going through and you just know that this is no indication to where God can take you. The children of Israel, they dealt with changing narratives before they were delivered from the throes of Egypt. Initially, when they came to Egypt, they were treated respectfully. However, before they left Egypt, they were treated cruelly. Their, their cruel treatment didn't destroy them because God was with them. Listen to what the writer says in Exodus 1 and 12. The Bible said, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And there were dread of the children of Israel. You see, remember this. God has a way of taking care of us. He may not shield us from all the trials of life, but I'm a witness that God sure can bless us in the midst of our trials of life. A few weeks ago, Minister Simpson preached about being tested. She said, to count our joy when we face trials of various sorts. You see, for better than three and a half years, we have been tested as a church. We went through challenges repeatedly. However, in the midst of those challenges, we can stand today and say that we've been blessed by the Lord. Amen. The Lord did shield us from our challenges, but the Lord sure blessed us amidst our challenges. Amen. You see, God will carry you through. Amen. And once again,
again, I want to encourage someone today to just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Doesn't matter what it looks like today. I need you to hold on to God's hand with everything you got. Doesn't matter you're dealing with reports. I need you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Doesn't matter your way of God. I need you to just hold to God's unchanging hand because the God that we serve, he will carry us through. Our text today bring, brings us to a point in Israel's history where God is ready to bring the people out of bondage. We might wonder why God didn't bring them out before he did. A simple answer to this question is this. God is a God of perfect time. Amen. You see, he knows what he is doing mm. even when we don't understand what he's doing. You see, like many of you, when it comes down to walking with God, I don't always know why God allows some things to happen. But I do know that I must trust in the Lord. Amen. When it doesn't make sense to me, reason or rhyme, I have to learn to just remain in a place of faith and faithfulness to just trust in the Lord. You see, Job said it best in Job uh, chapter 13, verse 15 in the A part. Job said, though he slay me, Yet will I trust in him. In other words, Job said, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but yet I will trust in the Lord. And I'm sure that some of us over these past three and a half years, we didn't understand. They've both been trying to figure out why everything happened the way that it did, and we don't have the answer. But what we do know today is our God has been a faithful God. Amen. And as long as we trust in him, God, he will, and God has brought us through. Yes, yes. God, who was watching over the children of Israel, he's now ready to bring them out of Egypt. Now, he gives them specific instructions as he prepares to perform his last mighty act that will convince Pharaoh to let his children go. God had sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh, instructing him to let his people go. And you know the story? <clears throat> Initially, he refused. Uh -huh. However, when he performed this last mighty act, in slaying the firstborn in Egypt, Pharaoh gladly expelled the Israelites from Egypt. Look at verses 31 through 33 in chapter 12. The Bible says, Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up, go out of out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel. Go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds and as you have said, and be gone. And then he said, bless me also. <laughs> he couldn't deny that God had blessed his children. And he said, now I want you to get out of the land of Egypt. But when you go, he said, bless me. And the Egyptian urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said that we shall all be dead. Now, now, do you know when God purposes something, no one, no demonic force can stop what the Lord determines to do? You see, when God purposes to do a thing, there are only two responses to the Lord. We only got two choices, not three. The first choice is that we can get on board. The second choice is we can get out of the way. Why? Because when God purposes to do something, no one can stop what God decides to do. Pharaoh thought that he could keep the Israelites held in bondage. But when God got finished, Pharaoh expelled the children of Israel out of Egypt. He said, be gone, get out in haste. But while you go, just 
just make sure you bless me as well. You see, God had, had determined that he would strike the firstborn in Egypt, that all of them would die. Before the Lord passed through the land of Egypt to strike the firstborn, he prepared his people. As people of God, we need to learn to stay close to God. Stay close to the Lord so that you can hear the Lord. Stay close to the Lord because God, he wants to reveal to us things to come. It's not God's will, God's way of operation or operating for him to let things take his children away. When we stay close to God, God has a way of pulling back the curtains and God will show us things to come. Do you know one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to be a revealer? Amen. Jesus said this in John 16, 13. Jesus said, how be, how, when the spirit of truth hath come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. God wants us to be in the know, if I could say it like the young people say. God, he don't want to, us to be caught by surprise. He don't by surprise. He don't want us to be left in the dark. God wants to reveal things to us before they come to pass. He revealed to Noah that the flood was coming before the flood came. He revealed to Abraham that he was going to destroy Sodom before he poured out his spirit on Sodom. He revealed to Joseph that the famine was coming in the land of Egypt before the famine came. And here God reveals to the children of Israel that death is coming throughout the land of Egypt. God wanted them to be ready. He told the children of Israel to take the blood of a lamb or goat put it on the doorpost or the lintel of the house where they were. He explained to them the purpose of the blood. Let's read verses 12 and 13 again. He said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not come on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Mm. On that night, God moved through the land of Egypt. Right. He struck the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the house of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the captives in the dungeon, and to the firstborn of the livestock. After God passed through the land of Egypt, the Egyptian had a rude awakening. Look at verse 30. The Bible says, so Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, but there was not a house where there was not one day. Death had gone throughout the land of Egypt. However, in every house where the blood was placed on the doorpost and the lintel of the house, there was not one person dead. You see, when the Lord saw the blood, he passed over them. How many know today that the Lord is our keeper? If there is any group of people who ought to know that the Lord is our keeper, we ought to know that the Lord is our keeper. Amen. We don't have to ask anybody else. All we have to do is just look at ourselves being present in this place today. And we know that we've been kept by the hands of the Almighty. I listened as someone was talking about being in the storm, being in the wind, yeah. being in the cold, being exposed to elements, but yet the Lord, he kept us. 
You see, when I thought about the children of Israel, I thought about us. You see, like them, we've been passed over, but we have not been passed over. You see, today we come back into a place of worship after being away for three and a half years. The first time we were driven out by COVID, when the pandemic hit, and we could no longer worship in a place like this. We moved from the inside, but then once COVID lifted, or when you got more tolerable, uh, we had to deal with the building that was deteriorating. Mm -hmm. In other words, the building was literally about to fall down. Yes. Look around you now. It don't look like it used to be, but I thank God that what could have happened didn't happen. You see, God, he, he gave us we heard the trusses as they cracked. We heard the sheetrock as it gave way. We watched things falling. And we could have built on the inside of this building worshiping. And the building could have collapsed on us. But instead of the building collapsing on us, God showed us mercy. God
Thank you, Lord, for our Passover. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And through him we have life. And we rejoice today. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us eat the bread together. As we remember what Jesus did, the all-sufficient sacrifice, the Lamb of God.
himself called a Mignon. Okay, and I say pretend either one of them. I just say the easy one. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. And I thank God for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And only you know. You know. You know where we've been over the years. God has blessed you. Y'all just give God praise one more time.